The advantage of puppet animation is that you can use a relatively small amount of artwork and recycle it and repurpose it so that you can create many many minutes if not many many hours of animation footage. It is entirely possible to collapse an animation timeline from years or months to days or weeks. In my recent rig theory video, I talk about five criteria for an all occasions rig that allows you to get the maximum mileage from your model. Rig theory 1.0 is distinguished by the fact that we can use soft rotation and an intelligent rig to bind and to animate the pieces and parts of the character. Rig Theory 2.0, we're now extending the abilities of the Smart Magnet Rig with FK extenders, IK effectors, and welding different parts to the character so that things that are supposed to rotate in a specific way can. The very distinguishing parts about Rig Theory 3 is something called shoulder shrug and the body mechanics in the hips and crotch area. I have this set of rigs all on the same screen for a reason. This is one of the first rigs that I completed once I started to really get the handle on flash power tools. You'll notice that the pant area is all blacked out. I'm using solid colors for the legs because it was very challenging to show the differentiation between one leg and another and the hips and pelvis area. I do solve this later, but I want to point that out because this is one of the distinctions of my first set of rigs. Now I'm starting to use some of the other advanced features of the plugin. Selecting some of the parts of the character within this area is going to be really tricky. I may end up selecting something that I didn't intend to. So this FK extender allows me to manipulate the root. And next up is something called Rig Theory 3. With Rig Theory 1.0 and 2.0, I didn't know how to layer that art so that I could get convincing dynamics when the character is standing or running. So I basically hid those details in a solid color. Well, with Rig Theory 3, I have an approach that allows me to now distinguish the legs from the belt or from the underwear, if I so choose. Another tooling that I explored and developed in Rig Theory 3.0 was getting more comfortable with nesting and hiding different pieces of art as nested symbols. This is something that I didn't discover all at one time, but it was a result of trying different things out and putting the character through some of their paces. What's exciting about these generic models is the exact same body for the male and for the female is I can change just a few details and I have a completely different character. So this offers a lot of promise as we want to build out a world of characters. Now I'm starting to be more committed to the recipe that I'm using for these rigs. Both smaller characters and larger characters, I have the same setup. Other than the tail and ears, which are obviously accessories on the character, all of the characters are right around 19 bones. There's another format and style of characters that I've been exploring, and I want to share those with you as we wrap up. There it is. For your viewing pleasure, this is one of the ultimate levels of rig theory design. If the level of detail is too high, then animating the character is especially challenging and you fall into something called the uncanny valley. We can avoid the uncanny valley by going with a very simplified art style. There's another huge advantage of working with that type of character. I've purchased these characters from a stock library, and some of them are jointed which means that rigging them and animating them is going to be a breeze. The trade-off is that the characters are very simplified. So depending on what kind of storytelling you're doing, these characters may be too cartoony or too naive to tell sophisticated stories. But if the narrative of the stories that we're telling is appropriate to this type of style, we're going to save a lot of time by being able to use this cast of characters over and over again. Maybe we're telling stories about school. We could be telling stories about bullying, about coming of age. We could be telling stories that emphasize drama and social dynamics, maybe standing out or fitting in. You know, just like any literary canvas, there's no limit to the type of story or the sophistication of story that we can tell. The main advantage, again, of this style, though, is, is the speed. If we had a more action-oriented story, stories with more daring do's, punches and kicks, and superpowers, or talking animals, 
in a world that's more intense. Here we have a level of detail that can carry those types of stories. The production design will necessarily be more complex with those type of character, those type of stories. Um, I do believe that we can find a, an approach to production design that allows us to, to manage how much work it takes to produce those types of stories. I want to definitely point a big sign at the fact that the simpler the character, the more mileage we can get out of them, as long as the narrative supports that style of character. Depending on how clever the writing, how involved the dialogue is, right, will all be factors that will inform whether we go with a more sophisticated art style or with a more simplified art style. I hope you found something that was wildly inspirational in that discussion. I'll see you in the next video.